Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So it is early morning. The sun is not even up. It's overcast today. It's super, super dark. So hopefully my lighting is not too terrible. Um, but my project for today is I wanted to pre-sprout my ranunculus and my anemone corms. So I live in zone 9b. So technically I really don't have to pre-sprout my corms. I could just soak them in water for three to four hours like we all have to do and then I could technically just plant them straight outside and not worry about that. Uh, anybody zone seven and above can do that in the fall. Anybody zone 6b and below needs to do that in the late winter early spring. Just because anemones and ranunculus can't handle temperatures 25 degrees Fahrenheit and below or else they'll freeze and then by the time that they thaw they'll rot. So they are kind of cold sensitive but we usually never get down to those temperatures here so we can definitely plant them outside in the fall which means earlier blooms in the spring. So why am I even bothering pre-sprouting my ranunculus and my anemone corms? So there's actually two reasons. I pre-sprouted them last year and it ended up working really well for me. The first reason why I like to pre-sprout my corms are pre-sprouting will weed out any dud corms. Any corms that aren't going to grow, they're not going to sprout, they're not going to make blooms. And this is important for me personally because my cut flower garden is very small. I have to use my space as efficiently as possible and I don't want to waste any space with corms that are just going to take up area and not provide any blooms. So by pre-sprouting them I can see if a corm is alive or not or is rotted or not and I can see if there's roots on it. I can see that it will be a good corm to plant out in my cut flower garden. Weeding out the duds is also really important because the ones that aren't viable will actually rot and they might get some fungus or some gross bacteria on it and that might taint the surrounding soil and actually taint more of the corms that are surrounding it. So it's actually keeping your area clean um, and it's keeping it healthy, uh, the soil healthy where you're planting the rest of your corms out. So it is actually really important to make sure you're not planting any rotting corms or corms that have funguses or diseases. The second reason that I like to pre-sprout my anemone and my ranunculus corms is that I feel like it will give you earlier blooms in the season. So last year when I pre-sprouted my corms, I got my ranunculus and my anemone blooms so, so early. Usually what happens is, is if you pre-sprout them, you will get blooms about three months after. So if I end up planting them in mid-November, I will probably get blooms in early to mid-February, which is fantastic because that is the time of the year that you want color. So this is really, really important if you live in zone 6B and below and you have to plant your corms uh, in the late winter or early spring, you want to get a jump on those. You want to get those corms growing as soon as possible so you can get blooms as soon as possible when the daylight is still, the, the days are still short because anemone and ranunculus corms are receptive to day length. And so if you wait too long to plant your corms, then they're not going to grow as well because the days will start getting too long. So earlier in the spring is better and then getting a jump on it with pre-sprouting is even better. My thought is, is that if I can pre-sprout my anemones um, and get them growing and make sure that I have all really good ones, it's going to get a jump on the root growing process and then hopefully instead of mid-February getting my, my blooms, I might get them early February, which is even better. So again, if you're in zone seven and above, seven, eight, nine, ten, you do not have to do what I'm going to do today. You really just have to pre-soak your corms and then plant them out into the ground. If you are going to get freezing temperatures 25 and below, you do want to put some frost cloth or some type of perfect protection on them to make sure that they don't freeze and then rot when they thaw out. I am just being extra. I just, <laughs> I just like doing this extra step. It's like a little bit of a uh, control thing for me. I feel like I have better control of these corms, knowing what I'm dealing with, knowing which ones are viable, and then trying to get a jump on the blooms. So you can see back behind me, I have my whole setup. I have a bunch of 
bowl type things um, that I'm gonna fill with room temperature water and then I'm gonna take my corms and I'm gonna let them soak in there for three to four hours. Again, it's really important not to overdo this. I see a lot of people say soak them overnight. I think over, I mean, I sleep too long <laughs> for them to soak overnight. I don't think that overnight is a good way to do it because if you sleep in or if you get distracted, you're gonna over soak your corms and you're gonna cause them to rot. So I think just setting a timer for three to four hours is the best way to go, soaking them in room temperature water. And then I will show you when I come back, I will show you how I put them in soil in seed starting trays to get them pre-sprouting. Okay, so here's my whole setup. I'm gonna fill all of these with water, like I said. Here are my anemones from last year. Um, I just took the corms out. I dried them out uh, in, you know, just outside, and then I stuck them in this bag, and they've been sitting here in this bag in my laundry room all year. So. Let's see if they work. They should work. And yes, I could have left these straight in the ground. I could have left the anemones and the ranunculus straight in my cut flower garden, but I have such little space. I like switching my cut flower garden over. So I get a lot of questions when people say, couldn't you just have left those in the ground? Yes, absolutely I could have, but that's just not how I handle my cut flower garden, being so limited on space. So these these were like this bright blue color. It was... um. Was it Mr. Fokker or Dr. Fokker? I don't remember. Um, but it was this blue one. And then I had some of the anemone whites. And then randomly, it also came with some pink and some purples. So hopefully these will pre-sprout. Um, these are the ranunculus that I had in my cut flower garden last year as well. Again, I had purchased a mix that kind of looked like that. And these popped up as yellow, orange, red, white, like all like happy, <laughs> joyful colors, but nothing that I actually had purchased, but that's okay. So we'll see, I will soak these and I will pre-sprout them as well. And then these I actually purchased from Costco. It was an impulse purchase. This is the apple blossom mix, but I just thought that was so perfect for Valentine's Day. I'm so sorry about the lighting, you guys, but Valentine's Day, how fantastic. So if I can get these to bloom, these three I'm gonna put in my big flower field. Um, if I can get these to bloom for Valentine's Day, oh my gosh, I think that would be amazing. These four right here, these are all going in my own cut flower garden on my property. These two are ranunculus and these two are anemones. This one is shamalo. Someone told me how to say that. It's a French for marshmallow. So ranunculus shamalo. Um, and then here is a romantic mix, ranuncul ranunculus. Then I have the anemone rainbow pastel mix, and I have the anemone white, which is like the classic um, creamy white with the black eye. So I'm gonna get all these filled with water and then soak all of them and then set a timer for four hours and I will be back. So they're all soaking. Timer is started. I did have to get another bowl because I had way more ranunculus than I had planned on. I did leave some of the stems on them, but I think that they'll be fine. So the idea is, is that these will basically double in size as they're sitting here soaking. Um, so you can see what a normal ranunculus corm looks like. I think it looks like an octopus, but once they soak here for a while, they will plump up and they will get even bigger than this, probably double the size of this. Here's the anemones looking like, I don't know, like an acorn or something. Sorry, the light. There we go. Looking like an acorn. And so it will plump up, should double in size, hopefully. And then I will stick them in some moist potting soil so they can start pre-sprouting. All right, you guys, I will be back in four hours. Oh, wait, I wanted to show you Look what I found. I completely forgot, but I saved some of my tulip bulbs. So here in zone 9B, we, we really can't leave tulip bulbs out. They're annuals for us because we don't get cold enough over the winter. 
We have to pull them and then some people will actually pull them, store them all season and then pre-chill them in the fridge. I have all my other uh, tulip bulbs pre-chilling in the fridge right now, but I completely forgot about these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go stick these in my garage fridge right now with my other tulip bulbs and then I will plant them out and I will see how they do. This is this was a like a, a trial run I was going to do. If these will bloom this year, then I'll know that all the tulips that I plant if I don't, um, uh, you know, like damage them or anything like that, then I can just pull them, dry off the bulbs, store them like this all season, and then plant them again. And then that might save me some money. So I'm going to go put these in the fridge. Timer started for these. I will see you guys in four hours. All right, everyone, I'm back. It is four hours later and these ranunculus and anemone corms have plumped up to almost double their size. They're looking really, really good. So what I did is I brought out a tray filled with just regular potting soil, not anything special, just run of the mill, all purpose potting soil. And I've moistened it to a point where it's kind of like a wrung out sponge. So it's not actually dripping with any water. You don't want it to be too wet because that will actually rot the corms, but you do want it to be moist. So let me show you what I've done so far. So here's my tray. It's just one of these seed starting trays. I labeled it on the bottom. These are for ranunculus shimalo. And then over here, I'm gonna do ranunculus rainbow mix. And I just took a piece of foil, folded it a couple times and just made a divider. It's not that big of a deal to do something like that to so it, it's just to keep it straight for, for myself. So you can see here, here's the romantic mix. They have really, really bulked up, thickened up. Um, they're nice and plump now and ready to go. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out of here, out of the water, and then I'm just going to sprinkle them onto the soil. And then once I get them all down here, I'm just going to take more moist soil and I'm just going to cover them up until they're completely covered. And every couple days I will come in here, I'll root around and I will check just to make sure there's no rot going on. Um, but I want to keep them still moist. I don't want them to be too dry. So my plan is, is just to uh, come in, look at it. If it looks dry, I'm just going to spray it with a water bottle. Um, so it's kind of a, you want to, you want to thread the needle with it not being too moist and not being too dry. Um, but basically how I think about it is you want it to be just shy of dry soil. You don't want the soil to be dry. You want it to look like this. You want it to kind of stick together, but you don't want any, um, any drops of water coming out of it. So let me get the rest of these in here. There you go. And then on the other side, I will have the ranunculus shimalos. It's interesting, these shimalos are definitely smaller corms than the ranunculus mix. And I don't know if they're just younger corms or if they're just naturally that size. So I'll be interested to see when they start blooming kind of what we're dealing with. Okay, so I have all my corms of these two guys. I have them laying out here. They're all on the moistened potting soil. And then I just have this bucket that I have some more of the moistened soil and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top, just a thin layer until, I, until they're completely covered. Okay, so I've got all the corms completely covered. I only made a tiny bit of a mess. Dwight is checking it out for me. So what you wanna do is you want to store this tray in an, a cool, dark area. Dark so that the corms don't start growing and reaching toward the light because that's gonna mess with them. You know, you can see I didn't put them straight up or anything like that. So you want it to stay fairly dark and you can cover them up if you need to. And then you want it to be a cool area. You want it to be 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I find that the easiest way for me to get that temperature is actually to put these trays in the refrigerator, which is what I did last year. So I'm just putting them in my garage fridge with all the rest of my bulbs that are pre-chilling. Um, I am just gonna kind of uh, stack them kind of askew on top of each other. And then whenever I go in to check them for rot, I will just kind of switch them around so that uh, they all get equal airflow and not one of them is drying out faster than the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I probably have about four more trays to fill to get all of the corms uh, in the soil. And then I'm going to put all those trays in my garage fridge. It is going to be full.
All right, so I've got all my corms all pre-sprouting in their trays with moistened potting soil covering them underneath them and then also covering them. And then I also went ahead and I labeled all of them so I don't get confused, very important. So I have four trays here and then I actually have one more additional tray here behind the hard boiled eggs, just didn't fit up here. This doesn't look pretty. Jason is not gonna be happy with this, <laughs> but it's only for two weeks and I'm just kidding. He's totally fine with it. It's only for two weeks weeks and um, I will be checking them every couple days to look for signs of rot or mold or anything like that. If I see any of them like that, I will go ahead and toss them. Then after 10 to 14 days, they should be sprouting. You should start to see some little white roots coming out and then you know it's a good time to go ahead and plant them wherever you want to put them in the ground. So I'm going to be putting about half of these into my personal cut flower garden and the other half into my flower field in about two weeks from now. So that should be mid-November timing, timing wise. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty easy. This has worked really well for me. I did this, this whole, this whole setup last year and it worked really well for me. Um, I did find a couple of duds after I pre-sprouted this, so I'm glad that I did it. And I think now that I have a lot of my corms that I saved from last year, I think that I'll probably have to kind of weed out some of them that didn't, didn't hold over so well over the year as they were sitting in those brown paper bags in my laundry room. So I will definitely take you guys along when I finish pre-sprouting these and end up planting them outside. I hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.